So, my name is um, Dr. Jonathan Day, go by Mr. Day here, um, and I have just kind of uh, give kind of a full background of my knowledge with regards to this subject. I have six kids, um, but the oldest is going to turn 13 in a, a week or two, so I have not yet had a teenager. Um, but I, so my, my children are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. Um, about to turn odd years for this year. And the idea here is that I, I've also taught um, uh, homeschool to them. Um, so I teach multiple subjects. I teach theology, Bible, I teach um, uh, Latin, I teach writing and rhetoric to them, and I teach uh, math to them as well, right? And so I also um, have taught here at uh, Trinity, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, on up Latin. Um, I've taught um, uh, logic and debate, I've taught typing, I've taught pre-algebra, uh, multiple different levels of pre-algebra. Um, I'm teaching a life class this year. Um, and so I've, I've now spanned through um, all the way from preschool through 11th grade, um, but I've also taught college level, both graduate level and undergraduate level. Um, and so uh, I also got the benefit of spending three full days with Mrs. Watkins with 9th through 11th graders um, at a tournament where we had them basically for 24-7 for three and a half days. Um, we, we got to experience um, other people's children. Um, and so we got, uh, I, I got a really good sense of, you know, what students are like um, at these teen years, um, but also um, just from, from having six kids and seeing six different personalities. like. Like how, like each one of them are different. Some are more crazy than others. Some are less crazy than others. And I wanted to start here with a few Bible verses. So the first Bible verse, as you, as you all know, is the Great Commission. And it says, go therefore and make, this, Jesus says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. And one of the things that we have to remember as parents is that this great commission is to us as parents, to our children, right? We need to make sure that we are training and making our children into disciples of Christ, right? We need to teach them to observe all that Jesus has commanded. And we need to make sure that, um, that they are uh, living the faith, right? Not that they just know about it, but they're actually living the faith. Um, the other verse that I picked was, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it, Proverbs 22, 6. Um, this is kind of comforting to us parents who sometimes you know, worry about um, our children who uh, don't seem to be acting correctly or behaving. We should trust that the child will eventually uh, take our teachings and um, be mature adults. Um, and then finally, this is a really interesting one. This is from Luke chapter 2, uh, verses 51 to 52. And Jesus went down with Mary and Joseph and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. One of the interesting things about this is that we're, it's really weird to think about Jesus, who is God, is growing up in wisdom and stature before God. You're like, well, he's God already, right? Like, that, why, why does he have to grow up? But what's beautiful about that is it's the incarnation, right? That God became man, and then he took on uh, man's nature, and that nature is that we are born, right, with, you know, not knowing how to walk, not able to walk, right? Not knowing numbers or how to read. Um, but Mary and Joseph, right, taught Jesus all of these things that we're teaching our children, right? And so in a way, we, we are, as Christians, we believe that we are little Christ. And so we, as parents, are teaching, right, our children to be like Christ. And in that, right, the beauty of teaching them how to read, teaching them how to write, teaching them math, all of those things are things that Mary and Joseph were teaching Jesus as well. Um, and so they are learning to be like Jesus even from a young age, right? Um, they're learning to be like Jesus. So how are we making and training disciples of Christ? And I put these in questions just to kind of, and these are things that, um, you know, that I'm not perfect at, that I don't always do. Um, and so this is sort of a reflection on 
things that I would like to do as a parent, um, and so things that you know I, I think as parents we should be uh, thinking about. The first is, are we praying with our children regularly and frequently? And I put examples, I don't mean to do all of these, but you can do all of these. Um, beginning of the day is a great time to pray with our children, right? Uh, to start them in thanks and praise to God um, and to, to ask God's blessings for that day. Um, before and after meals, right, is a great time to pray. Um, uh, I said during, yeah, during the day. So in the middle of the day when you're struggling or if you something good happens, right, to pray with children. Um, after school is a great time to pray, right, to thank God for the blessings of school. Um, before bedtime and so forth. So um, are we praying with them regularly and frequently? Um, and are we giving them a chance, right? And this is one of the things I struggle with too. Are we giving them a chance to utter prayers, right? So asking them for prayer requests and pray for that. Asking them, is there something that you would like to thank God for, right? And doing that on a regular basis um, to show them that, you know, this is, this is how we commune with God, right? We talk with God. Um, the second one is, are we reading scripture with our children regularly and frequently, right? So we can read scripture with them at the beginning of the day. We can do it during a meal time, like dinner time. Uh, it's a great time to, if you, you know, have either breakfast or lunch or dinner with your child, um, you know, to, to read scripture during that time uh, or at the end of the day uh, or in the evening, um, uh, either before bed or, or much before time before bed. Um, are we reading scripture with them? There's a scripture verse here that I put, Deuteronomy chapter 6, 4 through 9. Um, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates, right? And so this is the, the exhortation here is for us as parents um, to read scripture regularly and frequently to teach them the things that God is speaking to us through, through his word and to, um, and to make it an everyday part of our lives, right? So like when you sit down, when you walk, when you go, when you have meals, when you, uh, on your doorposts, right? All of these places should be adorned with, with, our, with our faith, right? Um, you know, whether it's a, a, a cross on the wall, right? Um, or um, it is, you know, uh, some sort of um, painting of a biblical scene or something like that, right? Um, these things will help remind your children frequently. Because I, I guarantee you, like, you know, it wasn't, it was a long time ago when I was a child, but uh, I, I do remember if there is a painting, right, in, in your house, right, that is a way for you to witness to your children or for them to reflect on their faith and, and you pass it, you didn't even have to do anything, right? Because they will walk by that and they'll look at that and they'll go, oh, you know, they'll think about it and, and it'll, they'll remember it. So having a painting of a biblical scene uh, on your wall or a cross, right? Um, and so, you know, my, we, we, we put um, sort of as, as a tradition, it's a Catholic tradition to put like a, a crucifix over every like doorway or whatever. And so my kids though, will they'll go around and they'll be like, oh, like, where's Jesus? And they'll like point to, they know where every cross is. Like they will point to every cross because they know they've walked by it and they've, they've seen it and they know where it's at and it's part of their lives on a daily basis. Um, the third um, is, are we modeling what it is to be a Christian in our devotion? So apart from with our children, do they see us pray? Do they see us read scripture, right? Do they see us going to church every Sunday or even more, right? They, they recognize those things um, and, and they model that, right? I, I noticed um, I, I had this devotion where in the morning um, I would kneel down and pray when my, and my son was, my oldest son was only three at the time. Um, but one day he just did that, right? He just got down on his knees and prayed right at the spot that I do because he saw me do it right? He wanted to model that, right? And so um, they, they are very keen observers, as you guys know, about everything we do, and they want to mimic that. And so if we want our children to pray and read scripture, then we should be doing that um, 
as well uh, in, in, in a way that they, they see that on a regular basis. Um, are we modeling what it is to be a Christian in our behavior? Are we slow to anger? Um, uh, do we give forgiveness? Or do we show love and charity and patience and so forth? All of these things, um, they, they will model our behavior to a T. Um, and so it is important for us to, uh, to make sure that we constantly reflect. Are we acting in a Christian-like manner uh, when a situation arises, right? Do we give thanks to God on a regular basis? Number five, are we praying for our children regularly and frequently? One of my favorite verses with regards to this is in Job, Job 1, chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. There was born to him seven sons and three daughters. He possessed 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 female donkeys and very many servants, so that this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. His sons used to go and hold a feast in the house of each one on his day, and they would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And when the days of the feast had run their course, Job would send and consecrate them, and he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job did continually. Notice this, so every day Job would wake up early and pray for his children, right? Because he was like, they might have done something wrong, I'm going to pray for them, right? And, and he didn't know whether they did something wrong, he just would pray for them thinking they might have, right? And so it's important for us to, to pray for, like Job, our children on a regular basis, right? And I know you guys probably do this, but, it, but as parents sometimes, we get so caught up in the sort of making sure they're fed, making sure laundry's done, making sure they get to bed on time, making sure they wake up, that sometimes we do forget, oh yeah, I should also pray for them as well, right? Like that's, that is, it is, it is so much um, of the world, or of their just physical needs require of us that sometimes we forget to also pray for them spiritual, for their spiritual needs. All right, and number six, are we blessing our children? What's interesting, this is a really cool thing. Parents have the gift of being able to bless their children. So, um, and of course it's a blessing from God, um, but we see this in like the Old Testament, right? Where the, where the father will bless his children and stuff like that. But as parents, we have that parental authority from God to bless our children from God, right? And so, um, you know, are we, are we taking time to, to bless our children? And one of the, this is kind of an interesting thing that you can do is that on a daily basis, you know, if you're praying for the children, you can also give them a blessing, right? And so, you know, there, there are a couple of different ways that you do it. One of, one of the ways you could just do it as simply as, you know, putting your hand on their head and saying, may God bless you today, right? Like that is, that is just a wonderful gift that you can, that you can give to your children. Um, uh, Catholics, we, we like to, to do the sign of the cross on the forehead, right? Um, and put a sign of the cross and say, may God bless you today. There's also a blessing in the Old Testament um, that, that's really um, kind of more spelled out. Um, it's from Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 to 26. It's, a, it's a, the Aaronic blessing from Aaron, the high priest Aaron. Um, and the blessing goes like this. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, right? So if you want to do a more spelled out blessing for your children, that's, that's um, a, a way you could use those words as well from scripture to do that. Um, but simply blessing our children each day, right? That parental blessing that we have um, is, is such a great gift that we can give to our children, right? And it provides spiritual graces to our children to be able to continue to grow in the faith. And by the way, they see that, right? They feel that when you bless them like that, they sense that, wow, that was something special because, and I'll tell you why, I, I know this because I, I did this blessing um, to my children on a daily basis. I I've, I've stopped in the last year or two and I want to start it back up again, but I did this for like a year or two. Um, and after like a few months of doing it, like one night I forgot to do it and, and my child was like, dad, you forgot to bless me, right? Like, please bless me. Like, cause they, cause they, they sense that that is something beautiful, right? Um, that you are doing for them, right? Um, all right, Let's go to the next page. Um, so 
I guess the the one of the things, and this was sort of this was meant for kind of junior high, middle school. This this talk was meant for junior high, middle school students. Um, so this this part of it was a little is a little more geared towards that. Um, but it also applies to younger students too and older students. Um, kids in general are crazy, right? Like they do things that that. I, I never thought that I would have to tell my child, stop banging your sister's head against the wall. Right? Like I never thought those words were, or don't lick that dirt off the bottom of your shoe, right? Like, uh, or why can't you like use common sense, right? Like, you know, there, there's so many daily things where our children just kind of forget, like, or just don't realize common sense things. Um, and like, we're so anxious for them to be adults. <laughs> already even at the age of like even at the age of two or three that was easier at like two or three to like write it off as like you're a child okay i understand but as you get older you're getting more and more anxious for them to be an adult you're like you're 17 now you're 18 now just be an adult um and i think we have to understand that like it's it just takes time and we just have to be patient um uh, i remember a story when i was a sophomore in high school okay so i was 15 years old 15 or 16 at the time, and we had a substitute teacher in the class. And before class started, I was jumping over desks, running around just acting like a crazy person, or like just fooling around with my, my buddies, jumping over desks. And the substitute teacher came with a rolled up piece of paper, I think Ms. Watkins knows the story, and she hit me with it, right? And maybe I told the story to you guys too already. But she hit me with this piece of paper, and I sat in my seat, because she was just so frustrated that I was just acting crazy. Um, and then 30 seconds later, on the speaker, this is a, you know, of like 2,000 students in the school, uh, Jonathan Day, can you come down to the principal's office? You've been awarded the Student of the Month <laughs> Award, right? And so, like, we're talking about, like, so I was the model student of 2,000 students for this month, and yet I was still acting crazy, right? And so we have to understand that, like, that's, that's normal, right? It's normal for kids to act crazy. It's normal for them to not do things that we think is common sense, but we just gotta keep persevering with teaching them the rules and teaching them how to behave. And um, the more time we spend with them doing that, um, the better they will be off, right? Um, because if we neglected them completely, it would take them maybe into the 30s and maybe they'll never, maybe they would never learn, right? So as parents being devoted on a daily basis, the more time you spend with them and doing that. Then of course, as they get older, they need to start learning independence, right? They need to maybe get a job. They need to, you know, um, they need to start doing things on their own and we need to start expecting the, that independence from them, right? But it, it just takes time. We just need to be patient for them. So, all right. Um, some unique things that students go through during the teen years, um, you know, so some of you, will, it'll be a number of years before you get to this, but the, they want to know why on everything, every rule, everything, sometimes they'll ask why. And we need to take a lot of those questions very seriously and try to answer them um, and think about them. Because um, sometimes as parents, we, our gut reaction is like, because I said so, that's it, right? And that's true sometimes, but, uh, but a lot of these questions like, Taking some time to answer that why behind the question um, really helps students to sort of internalize it um, and to understand it. And the other thing is, um, especially with questions regarding the faith, like this is really hard. Like they'll start asking very deep questions about the faith, and so taking time to, you know, if you can't answer it in the moment, right, to so take some time to go research it, pray about it, ask other people about it. Like, how do I answer this question? And and then explain to them that. Um, and, and then also like in the moment, if you want to answer in the moment, you know, quickly say a prayer to ask God to bless you with wisdom to answer this question. And a lot of times he comes through, right? Like, and sometimes he wants you to go read and pray and search more about it. But, um, but making sure, especially with regards to questions of the faith, that they know the why. And that's part of what's wonderful about this school, right? What's wonderful about being part of this school is we try to do a lot of that answering the why part of that question, right? So we, we spend a lot of time answering that kind of question when they get to that age. Um, we, we, we help them to think through it logically um, and with reason about what, what, why, why do they believe what they believe? And why is it important that they believe what they believe? Um, and so, you know, this school is definitely here to help. And what's also beautiful about this school in terms of helping um, 
our children become Christians, right, and and or, or to to be devoted to the faith um, and to live the faith, um, is that they are surrounded by like-minded believers, right? Their peers are, their teachers are, the administration, the board, the volunteers, everyone is. They're surrounded by this, and that is so beneficial because it it serves to strengthen them, right? So they will get plenty of times to be challenged on the faith from their peers, from from teachers and stuff like that, but the teachers and the peers are working to help sort of grow in the faith. And so that's why this school is a beautiful thing for Christian children um, to be strengthened so that by the time they get to 18 and they need to go to college, they will have a really solid foundation in terms of why they believe what they believe and, and why it's important that they believe what they believe. So, um, and then the last is um, you know, they are more susceptible to their emotions. Little kids are too, but teenagers have a lot more hormones going on. Um, and we just need to spend as much time with them as possible um, with them. Um, that, that helps, I think, regulate their emotions. Um, you know, whether it's just watching a movie together or the more time that we can spend, whether it's at the dinner table or breakfast table or lunch, lunch table, right? Whether the more time we can spend with them, you know, and, and just, and just, you know, what some people call wasting time with their children, right? If you just spend that time with them, um, that, that will help as they, as they get older. They, they, they crave that quality time, um, and so it's important for us to remember that. Because the reason I say this, because I'm sure you guys spend lots of time with your children, but we do get distracted, right, as parents. Like, you know, like I know sometimes I get distracted with like, I've started playing spades lately with on, on, on the phone. It's like a childhood game that I used to play. Um, and or we get distracted with watching videos on Facebook or we get distracted with like, you know We don't watch our own TV shows and stuff like that And so there is a time for us to have our own time of course Because I know as parents we can't spend all the time with our kids <laughs> Otherwise we'd go crazy, but spending as much time as we can just you know with them is, is very helpful so any questions particular questions that you have This is Watkins. Now that you have a senior, are there any tips that you would like to give to parents like me who will eventually be at that age? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. What you said, though, is, is it does become more difficult as they get older to find time with them. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's hard for them to, to balance. Um, I know Gabe struggled and struggled a lot last year. He got his first job last year um, working at Dairy Queen. And so it's the hours are five to close, which they close at 10, but after cleanup, it's not, it's like 11, 1130 sometimes when he gets home. And so he gets home from school at four or we're close to four and then has like an hour of decompression time, less than that because he got to get ready for work and then work until 1130 and then then after that is when he starts school, his homework. And so like, it was a huge struggle. And like, he was, he was in tears a lot of the time saying, like, I feel like my, like my priorities are work, school, family, God, like he put God all the way at the bottom. I was like, like that was hard for me to hear. Um, and I, I tried to get him out of it. I was like, maybe work wasn't the good, maybe it wasn't the right thing. Um, so I'm hoping he can kind of work a little bit through that. I think as he's, as he's gotten, as he's he's worked there a year now, and I think it's become a little bit easier to kind of maintain, you know, priorities in his life, and um, you kind of put God back at the top. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I mean, and that, but that happens to all, all of us, right? I mean, as we get older, sometimes we we forget that priority of what we have. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Other tips that, that you guys have found useful for um, just that, that you noticed your children either growing closer to God or that you felt like they, you know, they really appreciated something that you did for them or with them or... I hope they appreciate what we do for them. <laughs> They don't. I think that Not as much when, as they become, <laughs> when they become adults. I know, when they become parents, they're like, oh, that's what I'm telling my kids. I'm like, you will have kids one day. 
Um. So uh, one one of the things too, I guess I would recommend is like thinking about um, you know uh, particularly taking sort of vacations, right? Where where you are kind of where they're away from school, right? Where they are, you know. And, and, and just being able to sort of just devote, and what we do, everyone, this is the sort of the specific that we do, every once in a while we do what's called like a, a, a what do we call it, uh, an electronic break or no, no tech retreat or something like that. I forget what the term that we use, but what we do is we like, um, we, we go somewhere for like three or four days and we drop, like we don't have any phones, we have no iPads, no TVs, nothing. Um, we, take, we take coloring books, some books, whatever the case may be, and we just like for three or four days, we, whether we camp or spend it at a hotel or whatever we do, um, it is you know an Airbnb or something like that, and we just do not, we have no electronics whatsoever. Um, and that's been really helpful because it really focuses like how do we spend time together and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, the, the no tech retreats is a, is a good one. Um, I'm trying to think here. Yeah. I've sometimes started having, like my, so my dad is retired and my parents are, my kids are only grandparents. And so, um, because if I want to take Gabriel like somewhere just one on one, then I would have to get somebody else to watch the other two, or because yeah. uh, they're just thirteen and twelve. And sometimes I can leave them alone if it's a short time, but but for like a whole day, I wouldn't want to do that. And so I've asked my dad, I'm like, can you make like have a Papa and Gabriel date? <laughs> and so I've asked my dad, like, can you? And now Gabriel sometimes will drive them somewhere. They just had one a couple week, couple weeks ago. I was like, G Gabriel wanted an excuse to not have to go into work on an off day, on a day he was off. Nice. And I said, well, call Papa, see if he'll do something. He's like, do we have, because Gabe's like, do we have any family things going on? I was like, call Papa and make something happen. <laughs> so they went to Springfield and did some mini golf and bowling. That's awesome. Went to Taco Bell. <laughs> yes. Yeah. My, just, just some time to, yeah, carving out time. Yeah. I know right before I went to college, my dad took me on like a, a weekend camping trip. Where it was just me and him. Just went camping, we backpacked. And stuff like that. That was that was really memorable. Um, yeah, I mean, it's weird. I was 17, 18 at the time. 17. Um, no, maybe I was 18. I think it was right before college. So, but it was like, but I, I felt like such a little kid, right? Like I had this weird emotion. Like when I think back, I had this weird emotion. I feel like I was both an adult who understood something more than my dad, but then I was also felt like I was a kid who was spending time with his dad. So it was like a really weird mixed emotion, right? Um, the reason why I felt like I was like, like more adult than my dad was because he wanted to just go with like this filter to like um, filter water. Uh, he didn't want to take like any like, like backup water, like actual filtered water. <laughs> he just wanted to take a filter and go. Um, and I, I, had, I was like, oh, that's crazy, right? So I, I put in like bottles of water. And what happened is we, we left at, we were so excited. We got to like the, we, we should have waited till the morning to start hiking, but we were so excited. Like we got to the Shenandoah Valley like at 5.30 in the afternoon. It had rained for like the whole day previously to that. This is important to the story because we go off at 5.30 and we start hiking and uh, with our backpacks. And what happened is, is it got dark really quickly um, and, and then we got lost. So we're like in the dark trying to find like our way, like where's, where's, where, where are we at? Um, so we finally found this ledge. Turns out we were actually walking like this close to like a cliff, like we were just like falling off. But we, we found this little like enclave or whatever. And so we, we, we stayed there at the night, but everything was soaked. So we couldn't like make a fire, right? Um, we, um, our flashlights, um, Actually, when we turned those on, as we started walking, um, this was the crazy thing. The batteries were dead for some reason. So we, we didn't check that before. Um, and so we were like in the dark with no fire, like basically just cowboy camping on this enclave. Um, and and the, we, it was, we couldn't find the water stream, right? Because we knew there was a water stream back there, but there's no way we we're gonna like try to like, in the dark, try to go filter some water in the pitch dark. Um, and so like that night or whatever, um, 
I heard my dad like open one of my bottles of water. I was like, see, that's why we needed to do that. But at the same time, like we felt, I felt like such a kid because it was like an adventure with my dad, right? And so I really felt like I was, like in my mind, when I think back to that, I feel like I was younger than I actually was, like 18. Um, I felt like I was like 10 with my dad. So, um, but yeah, like spending that time uh, alone. I, I noticed too, one other thing too that I noticed, we did an experiment with our kids as well. We used to do this rule where we had electronics, like after school, the day was ended, they could get on electronics, and of course there's six kids and we have limited devices, so like they had to take turns, right? Um, and so that, that worked for a while, but then we tried this experiment a few months ago, um, is that we, Monday through Friday, we don't do any electronics whatsoever. Um, and what's interesting about what happened with that, uh, and again, this is an experiment, we've only been doing it for a few months, but the, the kids were very upset about that. They did not like this sort of no electronics from Monday through Friday during the school year. Um, but what happened was they, um, uh, they just started getting creative. Like they started making up their own games. They started like reading Poe to each other, Edgar Allan Poe to each other. Um, they started like dancing to Christian music. Like they, like they just did, they were like, kept themselves entertained. And I was like shocked by that. Cause I was like, as a parent, like electronics has been somewhat of a good crutch, right? You know, with six kids and you're like trying to maintain them. And like electronics is a way to kind of like get them to like <laughs> be entertained really easily. So I would think about just be very thoughtful in terms of the, you know, um, when you use electronics because it can become like a crutch and we used it as a crutch for a long time and we still do, right? Particularly on weekends, we're like, you know, you can have free reign on electronics during the weekend. So, um, and there's no right answer to this, right? My point is, is that um, it was shocking to me when we did the no electronics thing that they actually survived. <laughs> like that, that, that we didn't go crazy in the meantime as well. So um, I just wanted to put that out there as a possibility. So, but yeah, but there again, as parents, this is one of the things, the craziest thing, right? This is one of the, my pet peeves as parents is that if someone has a different view of what should be done, with, they think that you're completely wrong and they're completely right. And like with parenting, there is just so much like leeway with parents in terms of like what is right and what is wrong, right? And so I, I think that that's why I get really upset when like parents criticize each other or me or I'm in my mind saying, because it's like there's, especially grandparents, I think are the worst of this, right? <laughs> grandparents are like, I did it this way and there is no other right way. If you're doing it any differently, you're completely wrong. Is that touching a nerve with some people? I don't know. Like, oh, no, I'm not, not at all. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay. nerve. I'm just... <laughs> yes. No, but that's, that's I, I find that with, like, with uh, with our parents, our grandparents, their children's grandparents, that they, they have, like, a specific way that something needs to be done. Um, but, but I will say this, right, as a classical school, one of the things, this is the last point, as a classical school, one of the things that we do want to strive for is for the classical education not to start and end at school, right? We want the classical education to to be sort of an like 24/7 thing, right? And then what I mean by that is, right, we should as parents after school ends, we should still expose them to good, you know, good music and beautiful arts and, you know, we should still read scripture and and when we read to our kids at nighttime, it should be from class, you know, real good books, right? Um, we should be very thoughtful about the books that we, we read to our children and stuff like that. And so, like, I, I think it's important for us to, to maintain that classical education past the school to end. So, all right. Well, thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Mrs. Watkins, for that insight, too, to older students. <laughs>